stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. Yes, I will. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Alex Ockry. He is excused. Thank you. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jekosinski. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. And Tim Meniger. Here. Okay, with seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum, approval, oh, board norms and reflections. Um, we passed the norms a few months ago, and there's a copy of them in your blue folder. Um, just a reminder to pay attention to those as we proceed through the meeting. Um, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. We do have um, the item 10.2, which is... Um, health office staffing changes 10.2 to be removed um, otherwise I would entertain a motion I don't have any other items um, to change so I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended so moved that just removed for just for this meeting just for the meeting okay. sure if you had questions about it um, about the items you certainly could submit those to dr. Carlson or okay so Or we could yeah, leave so it on the I, agenda. Not knowing, yeah, not knowing what the reason is, just like kind of wondering what the nurses, if there's input from the nurses or whatever, or that sort of thing. Yeah, but sure. that's all. Great. Well, we will get that, make a note of that, um, and then uh, it mm -hmm. is going to be coming to a future agenda, correct, Dr. Carlson? The issue will likely be coming back at some point. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I would, and I think Anita yep. moved to approve the agenda as amended. Is there a second? I would second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be um, addressed. Okay, I think we have a lot of Friends of Education people in the audience <laughs> tonight, so we'll continue on then. Recognition and thank you, Dr. Carlson. Well, I'm going to begin first with an important recognition of the, for the Mullenbach family. Just thank you. Um, we, we thank the Sarah Mullenbach Foundation and for their recent $3,000 donation. And this will be used to purchase ukuleles and to be shared among our district school buildings. So thank you so much, the Mullenbachs. It is our annual time where we recognize uh, people that are significant to our school district and what they do on a volunteer basis. Every year we ask that each school nominate someone who has made a positive contribution to the education of its students in the Holman School District, yet is not an employee of the district. Criteria considered in the selection process might include time commitment, assistance, assistance with in-school and out-of-school activities, advancement of educational program for students, and the effect of the person's support has had on beyond the classroom and our building. So at this time, I'm going to introduce by schools, and actually we'll go by the order that's on the agenda tonight. And um, as the presenter um, comes up and introduces, I would ask the honoree to join that person up front. And we'll just stand up here, we'll use the wireless mic, and the presenter will just stand in front of the side table. And then once the presenter is done with comments or introductions, then the honoree will have an opportunity to also make comments. And um, that's entirely up to you, though. It really is. We, this is a place we want you to feel comfortable, but we're so pleased to have all of you here. Once the honoree or the friend of education finishes with their comments, we ask that um, that person remain up here. We might just ask you to step off to the side or back 
and as the next school then, the next presenter comes up. We ask you to stay up here, the honorees, because then at the end we will take a group photo of the entire group. As the individual comes up and as the comments are done, we do want to take one individual photo and Board President Mrs. Hancock will join you and present a certificate of appreciation and, um, and we'll take care of that before the next building comes up. So we're going to call on the high school and they're going to lead the way to make sure uh, we do this right. So, um, to take all yeah, so thank you. It is. Good evening. Um, I'm Bob Bear, the principal from Holman High School. And it's my pleasure tonight to introduce Mr. Scott Ryan. He is our friend of education from the high school for this past year. And through Scott's involvement with Rotary, he's very involved with the Holman Rotary Club, he has had numerous opportunities to make connections with our kids at the high school. And one of those is through Interact. He is at our building on Tuesday mornings once a month, twice a month, and he meets with those kids um, on Tuesdays and those kids become involved with volunteer hours throughout the school district and throughout the community and then another program that we started last year was the strive program and they had various Rotary members that became mentors for some of our at-risk kids and those kids are at risk of graduating and each one of those kids did a great job they graduated and a couple of them actually received some scholarships and then um, one of the last ones that Scott is involved with is we have a respect retreat, and usually it's in the spring of the year that involves every junior and community members and staff. And those kids meet with people from the respect retreat um, organizations, and they form and work on relationships with not just their peers, but also with the community members and the other adults in the building. And Scott has been extremely instrumental in all three of those areas and we appreciate everything that he does not just for um, the high school but for the school district of Holman and the community of Holman so Scott congratulations and thank you thank you, ver thank you very much uh, I'm proud to say I'm a, a parent of of uh, three students that, that have gone through or, and are going through the Holman uh, school district and very proud to be a parent of that and I'm proud to be a volunteer and thank you for the opportunity to volunteer at the high school. I got just a small token of our appreciation on behalf of the school district and from one Rotarian to another it's, it gives me a lot of pleasure. I know the lacrosse club that I belong to is very jealous of the work that you do here at home <laughs> and the model for them to follow. So congratulations and thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. That'd be fine, Scott, just back there a little bit. Sand Lake. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to all of the volunteers uh, here this evening. Sand Lake Elementary has been blessed the past seven years with countless hours from Fred and Sharon Schmelzer. Um, who have volunteered for both Sand Lake staff and students. This husband and wife dynamic duo has assisted with numerous uh, activities in the school, out of school, and community related activities. It began when their oldest daughter walked through the doors as a kindergarten student at Sand Lake. Sharon would volunteer in the classroom on a regular basis, working with students in learning centers and giving classroom teacher an extra hand in lesson pre preparation and with projects. The students looked forward to Sharon's friendly smile and gentle hands. Sharon continued to volunteer in the classroom for both daughters. While Sharon was in the classroom, Fred would offer to volunteer for any activity. This is just a, this is just a small sampling of Fred's commitment to educating the whole student. Fred, also known as Santa, provided <laughs> smiles to students this past holiday season while delivering mail, which created priceless memories for both students and for Fred. 
The staff would see Fred in the hallways and extend an invitation to chaperone, a field trip, and of course he would always accept. In a raffle item, if a raffle item was needed for the parent-teacher group, um, Fred would donate one and would donate it with a smile. Fred, who works for Staples over the years, has donated many office supplies to staff members. And I have to say, I'd get a periodic email from Fred who would say, hey, Brian, we have this dented whiteboard, and he'd send about four pictures. Do you want it? And I'd say, absolutely. So uh, <laughs> great help there. Um, tying ice skates in a cold ice rink all day was, was done for a cup of hot chocolate and a cookie. Fred shared his talents and knowledge of hockey with hands-on experience. A few days before the Safe Routes to School sponsored a bike rodeo event, Fred was asked to help out. He once again found the time out of his busy day, uh, busy schedule to volunteer. Mention to Fred, um, mention to Fred you have a need and it's always taken care of. Fred and Sharon have left footprints of positive contributions throughout the classrooms and lasting memories for the Sand Lake Elementary community. Fred and Sharon are the dynamic duo <laughs> as friends of education for Sand Lake, and we will miss them as their, both their daughters have moved on to middle school. Fred and Sharon Schmelzer. I just want to say thank you. Um, oh, I said this was going to be so hard leaving the Sand Lake Elementary because there isn't one teacher or one fellow parent that we didn't respect and get along with. And I just have to say, my sister and my brother-in-law are here, and they are like pseudo-parents to my daughters. And my brother-in-law is the same kind of person as my husband. My sister's wonderful, too, but he, <laughs> don he donated a parachute to Sand Lake Elementary. I mean, that's how much... They know we love Sand Lake and everybody involved. So thank you. This means a lot to us. Uh, thank you. I, the only thing I want to say is the only reason I was Santa is because Brian couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, Fred. Well, just a small token of our appreciation for the both of you. Um, thank you for what you do. You make Sand Lake a special place each and every time you're there. And it really, really helps to make the school district a Thank you. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to recognize Amy Brown. She's our parent here at uh, Prairie View. Um, she's been an incredible asset to us ever since our doors opened uh, five years ago, going on six now. She's organized and orchestrated cr uh, parties in uh, the classroom, uh, as well as um, taught junior achievement curriculum to our students. She volunteers on a weekly basis. She spends endless hours preparing for events for our PTO. Um, also is a regular uh, attendee of all of our PTO meetings. Um, she organized the clothing sales for PTO. Uh, Amy's willing to tackle any job that anyone else really doesn't want to accept or doesn't want to do. She'll do it. She's wonderful. And she does it with a smile. Um, she substitute teaches for us, and she's someone that we can really depend on. Uh, for the enjoyment of our staff and our students, she's also willing to get up and dance at some of our assembly programs. She's performed with the PTO and, and sang, as well as uh, performed in opera for the young. Um, she is the epitome of a parent who is active and involved in our schools. Uh, for the sake of our students and again our friend of education. Thank you so much, Amy Thank you um, It was a great school to come into when we moved here five years ago from Colorado, so It's what I love to do. I love to be around kids and I wouldn't ask for any other way I'll still be there next year when my my last one, <laughs> don't get rid of me. <laughs> Thank you, Amy, for all that you do for the school district, for Sand Lake, or for Prairie View, excuse <laughs> me, and for making it the unique school that it is. Um, you've enriched the lives of many students, and we very much appreciate it. Just a small token of our appreciation. A little dance. Uh, 
<laughs> With the right music. <laughs> Next is Evergreen. Hi, uh, I'm Jen Grass, and this is Sarah Craig, and we were asked um, by Rachel Favre to present this tonight to Sarah. Um, and I can't, I'm not even really sure where to start because she's done such an awesome job at Evergreen. And I think just to make sure I don't miss anything, I'm just going to read the nomination letter that I wrote for her. Sarah is very involved in our school. She has done so many great things for me over the years. This year, she has volunteered to work with in my room every Tuesday morning. She has mounted student artwork, hung student artwork in the hallways, prepped materials, cleaned, and assisted students during class time. She is a self-starter and is always willing to do what I ask. When I'm busy, she always makes herself helpful. The biggest task that she's involved with for me is helping me with the art fundraiser. She has helped me for years and I couldn't do it without her. She has put in countless hours of sorting and preparing and adding up orders. She is conscientious and I trust her completely. Words cannot express how grateful I am to have, her, have had her help for all these years. But the most impressive thing that Sarah uh, about Sarah is that she is incredibly humble. She never expects a thank you or any kind of credit for her help, and she deserves this award. Well, I'm here in place of Carolyn Green, who is out of the state for the summer, so I'm just going to read what she wrote. I would like to nominate Sarah Mihaljevic as our friend of education for the 2013-2014 school year. Sarah has been a longtime volunteer at Evergreen and is always willing to help wherever she is needed. This year, she volunteers in Carolyn's fourth grade classroom as well as in the art room and serves on the PTO. She has held many roles at Evergreen, but in Carolyn's classroom, she works with students on their reading comprehension and fluency. She has worked with individual students as well as small book clubs. She is always kind-hearted and willing to listen to them. She gently helps them discover unknown words. She always spends quality time with each child and talks with them about what they read and helps them make predictions. It is evident when she walks in the room and greets students by name that she enjoys spending time with children and making connections with them. Sarah Mihaljevic plays an important role in the education of all students at Evergreen. She is truly a special person and Ever Evergreen Elementary School would not be the same without her. Carolyn is truly honored that she chooses to spend time volunteering within the fourth grade classroom. I started uh, volunteering at Evergreen when my, our youngest started kindergarten, and now he will be in fifth grade. So um, I've really enjoyed my time at Evergreen. Uh, I always feel welcome. I always feel appreciated, and I thank you for the recognition. Thank you. Sarah, we want to thank you for making a difference in the lives of our students at Evergreen. They've got a great group of volunteers, so for you to rise to the top and be recognized, I know what that, how special that is. So congratulations and thank you. <laughs> be careful what you're doing back there. <laughs> Holman Middle School. Our friend of education is Carol Lavazetta, and I'm going to read the nomination that was sent in for Carol. Mrs. Lavazetta volunteers weekly in my classroom. She is willing to work with any and all of our students on a variety of skills. This is the second year that Mrs. Lavazetta has volunteered to work in my classroom. She volunteers to do anything with our students. She is always positive, and the students really enjoy working with her. She is an extremely busy woman, so I really appreciate the extra, ass extra assistance that she provides to the students in my ELA classroom. Mrs. Tracy Debkowski. And I would just personally like to say thank you very much for coming in. You always come in with a smile. And I always know when you've been there because Tracy will come to the office, and she'll talk about the great things that have happened. <laughs> and that makes me feel so good. And I just want to say thank you so much. This is really an honor for me. Um, I've been a volunteer for the school district for 15 years. So to be the recipient of this award from the middle school really 
means a lot to me. So I thank Brian and Mrs. D for this honor. <laughs> Oh, on behalf of the school district, just a small token of our appreciation. You know, the middle school is a special time. So for you to come back every week after week after week, it's a good <laughs> thing. So thank you very much for what you do to help those students out and make a difference in their lives. Viking Elementary. We're very proud to announce our 2013-14 Friend of Education, Deb Rochelle. Deb has spent numerous hours at Viking. She's our PTO president. She's coordinated our Viking chicken queue, which many of you have um, eaten much of our chicken. Um, she decorates our office to make it sure it's warm and inviting. She sells coupon books, um, script cards. She'll go door to door to sell script cards. <laughs> Whatever she has to do, and then she serves um, cookie and juice at our, uh, you know, after our music concerts. She has a what can I do to help attitude, and she finds a way to um, make sure our students and staff have what they need in order to, um, you know, to take learning to the highest levels. She's, um, she's got a whole lot of time and energy that she contributes to Viking, and, and Viking is a better place because of Deb. So we thank you, Deb. Well, for once in my life, I think I'm close to speechless, and my husband <laughs> <laughs> that. This is the one place I didn't want to be tonight. <laughs> it's a great honor for Bonnie to uh, bestowed upon me, her and her educational staff, and I'd like to thank everybody for that. Um, but I don't do it for the recognition. I do it because I have a child late in life, and the only way I could figure out what to do was to go back to the school system and see what was going on. The best way to do that was to get involved. And so here I am. <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you for what you do for Viking Elementary. And just a small token of our appreciation. Know that we're glad that you're in the school and you enrich the lives of our students. So thank you very much. In our home and public s school program. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Early Childhood and 4K staff, I would like to recognize Jennifer Lilla as our friend of education. Um, Jenny has provided valuable hands-on education experiences for the public preschool program for the past four years. Um, she first offered her expertise when her daughter, Kristen, back there, um, was enrolled in our 4K program. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> um, and she has continued to come back with her rewarding um, activities. So twice a year, Jenny comes into every site in early childhood in 4K, and she engages students in activities. She helps them understand and remember what animals in our area do in the winter. And they get to feel firsthand um, the difference in animal pelts and experience for themselves how various animals um, stay warm during the winter months. So they learn about hibernation, migration, and adaptations in terms that they really can understand. Um, and I know that um, the, edu the um, English language learners also are able to make connections when, they're, when you bring in those um, animal pelts. So thank you for doing that. Then when spring arrives, Jenny comes back to all of our sites again. And she um, has a lesson on the reawakening of frogs. <laughs> and the children eagerly await for her visit. Um, they learn about the life cycle of the frog. They hear the different sounds that frogs make. And then they pretend to be a frog. And they also try to catch some dinner. So um, Jenny is dedicated to providing rewarding experiences for our students, using much of her own time to prepare those lessons. And they're remarked on throughout the year by not only the students, but the parents. Um, and they really make a lasting impression on our students. So um, I have truly enjoyed learning from you. Um, what happens is she will do a presentation at one site, and then I'll, I'll find out where she's going next, and then I go to that site so I can see it again. <laughs> she's just outstanding um, <coughs> presenting to the children. So I thank you very much and look forward to you coming back again this year.
not hard to do. I, I absolutely am very passionate about uh, passing on all of the knowledge I have about nature and with the way technology and, and how our kids are so inundated with the new things of iPads and smartphones and this and that, it's very difficult to, you know, we want them to still make that connection with nature and if they can't make it out to where I work at the refuge, I'm going to bring nature right into your classroom <laughs> and that's what I, I love to do. And and um, I could have y'all do frog calls right now if you'd like. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it is a it is a real passion for me, and I'm sure that um, I may have uh, taught some of your children along the way. But it's it's a blast, and and it is fun when I see them in second and third grade, and they'll walk by and give me a little frog call or something like that. So <laughs> I know it stuck with them. But um, thank you, and the teachers are just fantastic, and. Um, I have to say a little thank you to my husband and my daughter who have to put up with all kinds of animal skins in the van <laughs> and frog calls at home and a variety of other uh, crazy critters that uh, I bring into the house before I'm preparing for the program. So thank you very much for, um, and I'm so honored for this. I really am honored. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you for providing a hands-on, real-life experience for our students, not this year, but the year before. I remember my granddaughter coming home and saying hibernation, and I thought that was a pretty big word for such a little girl. <laughs> so you've made such a difference, and, and it's a unique opportunity for them. So thank you very much. It's a token of our appreciation. Thank you. And as they're coming forward, I just want to say a group thank you. Keep coming, keep coming. <laughs> a group thank you to all of you. You know, it is what makes Holman so unique and so different. Is that people are willing to come out, uh, sometimes of their comfort zone, sometimes of their very busy schedules to make a difference and make it a, a real positive experience for our students. Thank you. We're going to have to scoot together. Yeah, Well, thank you, everyone. And we certainly do understand if you need to go. Um, we certainly understand. And thank you again so much for being here. Okay, then we will move on to the district administrator's report, Dr. Carlson. The only thing I'm going to really mention tonight is that part of the personnel report on the consent agenda this evening, I'm pleased to recommend, and I know um, high school principal Mr. Baird <coughs> joins me in this recommendation for Mr. Wayne Sackett to serve as Holman High School Associate Principal. Mr. Sackett currently is a science teacher at West Salem High School. And so I just want to, um, at this time, Mr. Bear. <laughs> I was just going to introduce Mr. Sackett and just invite him to stand. And <laughs> And, um, the camera can turn around and get a picture of him. And I did mention prior to the meeting, uh, certainly opportunity for comments, but um, I don't want to put any pressure on Mr. Sackett either. But again, uh, welcome. And any, any brief comments? Uh, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and, and uh, looking forward to the impact of the lives of the students and the students. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Wayne, <laughs> well, we have those thousands of viewers out in yeah. the, that are watching. We want to make sure they hear you. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, again, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and, and looking forward to impact many lives in the Holman School District. Thank, Thank you, you and welcome. Welcome. Again, I just want to comment that we did receive about 45 applications for this position. The process included screen, screening of applications pre-interviews uh, for several applicants, uh, references, structured interviews, and uh, then a final opportunity with Mr. Bear and myself. So thank you to those who participated in the process, and um, I'm just so pleased to be able to bring this recommendation to the board. 
which will be on the personnel report, part of the consent agenda this evening. Otherwise, unless you have questions, that's it. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to reports and discussion. 2015-2016 budget development calendar of events. Mr. Miller. I think I'm going to take this one. Okay, Mr. Sure. Clark. If you're all right with that. Please, i just following the list. So the, you have an issue paper and a proposed 2015-16 uh, budget development calendar of events uh, before you. I want you to know that this has been before the Finance Committee at both their July uh, and last week's August meeting uh, for input and review. The issue paper presents uh, a summary of the changes that have been made uh, not only uh, in this cycle, but uh, goes back and reviews the changes that have been made to the calendar and the process in the last several years. You remember about three years ago, uh, the board took some special meeting time to discuss budget development and processes and gave us some guidance uh, for future improvements. Uh, the issue paper also outlines four specific adjustments made to this year's calendar over the prior year's calendar. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? So this will be the calendar then would be up for approval at the next board meeting, is that correct? Or We're actually just presenting it for approval at tonight's meeting, this okay. based upon Sorry. the fact that it's been before the Finance Committee uh, on two occasions. And this is um, how we have done it in mm -hmm. the past, too, specific to the calendar piece. Because it's been before us before and different, there may be some changes in dates, that would be the... Sure. Okay. Then moving on to um, high school staffing increase recommendations, Dr. Carlson. This is a follow-up from the last board meeting when I, um, there was some discussion on staffing and it was clear um, that the board would be supportive. And so here you have an issue paper that is calling for a total of a .17 FTE. In other words, it allows the high school to staff an additional math um, FTE or .17 FTE. <clears throat> to assist with their scheduling and, and being able to accommodate all the courses. And so um, this is actually um, part of your consent as well tonight. Um, being that we did, I felt, present the issue to you at the last board meeting and it gave you an approximation <coughs> of the cost as well. So unless you have questions, again, we'd be asking for approval tonight as part of, part of the consent agenda. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to elementary staffing increase recommendation, Dr. Carlson. Well, as the board knows, um, since April, we've been uh, continuing to monitor closely um, enrollments, and I'm just going to, this specifically deals with the elementary level. And so on a weekly and now actually a daily basis, we are looking through um, the pupil service department and actually each principal in their office um, monitoring closely how the new enrollments and also those who may be leaving and i can tell you right now that we are at a situation where probably um, i don't know if i recall to this degree where we are at the maximums in several grade levels several school buildings as we apply, again, the administrative rule that the board knows very well um, and how we apply those guidelines. And so we are at a situation where um, last week, I think that's what I based the issue paper on, July 22nd, where we had multiple classes at a capacity of zero. In other words, if one more student enrolls, uh, we're looking at it per our administrative rule consideration to increase another section. I told you back in June, on June 23rd, when I presented that final elementary staffing plan at that time, that um, we would be at, we were at 75 sections across the district. Now the preliminary budget um, that you approved back in February and March actually included 76 sections but I did share with you in June 
that plan was at 75. We have not adjusted the budget, so you know that. But your issue paper does call for the flexibility to allow me to work with the administrative team, the principals and pupil services and HR, to increase the number of elementary sections and following, again, the board administrative rule. So it's right now, um, as of today, <coughs> I can tell you that uh, at least one or two of those zeros <coughs> have actually moved into what we would call the negative category where now that one or two students have added, whether or not this is the time to go ahead and increase that, um, I can't tell you this evening. We are meeting as an administrative group tomorrow morning to review this together. But what this is meant to do tonight, and I have included this on the consent agenda because of the timeliness, it's simply to uh, for the board to give me the flexibility that if we do reach those levels within the next couple weeks, that we can move forward. And then the next thing you would know, hopefully, dealing with is actually a name of a person. So this is all about the positions, not a name of a candidate. The uh, cost, we use an approximation of about $70,000 to calculate that. And so you do see this, this would be, we know that we have some work to do. I put simply down salary, district salary and benefits. We do need to, as we continue to work on the next budget stage, which be coming to you next month, um, the proposed budget, we would be incorporating this as far as updating that and seeing where we're at. But we are setting this as a priority I think that message has been um, uh, pretty clear with the board as well. And so I feel compelled to bring this to you this evening. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. Again, I just want to be clear, this is not saying to the board that as of tomorrow morning, we're going to go out and <coughs> add four positions. <coughs> but it gives us the flexibility or the opportunity to do so and by um, when we determine that we feel we have met the uh, criteria of the administrative rule. Um, so this, this does not say um, we would use all four. This does not say we would use one, two, three. This does not say that I may not have to come back for additional. Again, I'm just sharing with you what we've observed, what we're monitoring, and where we're at as a school district. And we want to make sure that we are um, proactive with this even though we are at the end of July. Um, and so anyway, this is why I'm bringing it to you tonight. Be happy to take questions. Otherwise, are asking for your consideration tonight as part of the consent agenda. Yes, it is on the consent agenda this evening. Are there any questions or comments? I have a couple of questions. So <clears throat> in just trying to understand it, both kind of seeming to come from different sides of the, of the spectrum. So first off, I know you said we'll be looking at the budget next week. Do you have any anticipated <clears throat> uh, impacts this would have on the budget? Because, you know, obviously when you have an expenditure of this sort, just like, you know, my home budget, you know, if I need a new refrigerator, I kind of got to figure out where that money's coming from. Um, do we have any anticipated impacts that this may have on the budget? Based on this evening, I'm not um, able to provide an update on specifically. So that work has, much of that has yet to be done. And, the, and then the second question I have is kind of a follow-up to some of the conversations that we've been having. Did you consider more of a blanket statement saying that in the future, any class sizes that would go over the maximum, you would just as district administrator have automatic authority to add positions as opposed to individuals one at a time like this? Um, I have not brought that to the board closest I probably have mentioned is part of the budgeting process, more of a contingency allocation. Um, but Mr. Menninger, um, I guess that would be the closest to what I've presented in the past. I don't, that, we, I don't know if that answers your question on that. I think when we do approve board inputs, 
that one of the things I think Dr. Carlson had asked for was to have that flexibility and we held it at the current, we said no. Mm -hmm. And because now we're having to come back. And so I think just maybe keeping that in mind as we do that next year with those inputs, that these are the kind of scenarios that could be addressed if we had already allowed for those to be in the budget. And then you know how it is if you say, okay, we're not gonna add, but the money's gonna be spent someplace else or allocated someplace else, and now we have to, we may, if we had to do this, I suspect we'd have to figure out where to get that 280,000 if we did it all, whereas if we did it up front, then we wouldn't be in that kind of a situation. So just for future, as we move through the budgetary process, I think. Um, but really what you're saying is as, really kind of what Tim said, it, from now to when school starts, as those um, sections get to that level, um, you're asking in the elementary level to be able to add four positions. Those are the, the ones that you identify at this point and possibly more if you need. Correct. Because it, it, it seems to me if we did not do this, we would then be in violation of our administrative rule. So it's, it's almost once we've approved the administrative rule, I almost think we might as well just say, well, then that's our rule, district administrator, follow it. Um, if I could, if you look at the administrative rule, again, one of the things that it does say is that maximum class size will not go over that particular number. At, at this point, based on recent board decision, K uh, pre-K three is 27, and then four and five is 30. I've always interpreted those as the non-negotiables. Those are. Now, when you look at anything leading up to that, um, how it's stated is it should be considered. And so, in that case, I feel that um, unless something changes, I feel that I do need to bring those to the board for your consideration and based on that recommendation. Um, we would still come, I would still come to you if we are, if we bypass that 30, but there will be, I, I would say to the board, um, unless you're going to change your administrative rule, that's a given, those max numbers. Anything, um, even applying that formula, leading up to the maximum, I think that should require me coming to you and perhaps some discussion and consideration. Um, so just for now or and or in the future, as far as consideration and thought with that. And if I'm not wrong, our input says that we will budget based on current <coughs> staffing. And so we could also do it on current staffing or administrative rules, and that would make it more flexible, but current staffing is a whole totally different thing. That's the number we have now. Administrative rules, adding that to it, um, would make it more flexible because then we'd have to adhere to that a little bit more, so. Yeah, part of your process and uh, in your policy <coughs> or rules too talks about any addition of staffing or increase of staffing that is to be brought to the board. Okay, <clears throat> any other questions on elementary staffing increase recommendation? And it is part of the consent agenda item, which is the next item on the list. We have 11, is it 11 or 12 items on the list this evening. I'll go through them since there are so many. We have the board minutes, the personnel report, financial claims and account, food service, meal prices. Um, recommendation for early admission to school, the Viterbo contract for student teaching and pre-student teaching, high school assembly committee advisor contract, implementation plan for substitutes, budget development calendar of events, high school staffing increase, elementary staffing increase, and the first reading of um, which motion, which policy is it? of policy BP762, competitive beverages and food sales. So I would entertain, unless someone would like to pull one of the consent and agenda items out, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. 
Motion carries. Board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of roll call. Ask that you present any comments or committee reports you have. And I know most committees are on a um, summer schedule, so with um, board members, if you have something, that would be great. Lisa Collins. I don't have anything. Okay. Gary Dunlap. I'd just like to uh, offer my congratulations to the great volunteers we had up front. Uh, what a great looking group. And it's really nice to hear how appreciative they are of the school district and how they enjoy being part of the school district. So I want to thank them. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Dunlap. Um, Mr. Cruz. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, what Gary, what Gary is saying, it was nice seeing um, all these volunteers. It's, uh, it's impressive. I'm kind of putting Dale on the spot here, but I biked past a home in middle school and the light up sign had a, had a name on it that was different. And I thought it was very, something about meeting success or something at home in middle school, but the HMS, HMS was HMS means success? Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. I like that. It's a cool school. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just thought, thought, I like it. Brian that looked up. a little tired cool. there for a minute. Uh, anyway. <laughs> No, it's. <laughs> is that your job? Is that you? Is that you? He was nervous for a minute, but now he's feeling better. <laughs> anyway, that was uh, memorable. Who, who, is, who thought that up? Was that you? That was not me. I cannot take the credit for that. That was, uh, that was at the middle school um, when, when I took the job there. But it is. Probably a student. Very well. Was it a student that thought it up? Probably, right? Okay, just kidding. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank well, thank you, Tom. Um, Mrs. Jagosinski. Uh, I wanted to first of all thank the volunteers too. It's so nice. It, it's just, it's great to hear the stories of what they do and all the time they put in. And you look at each one of them thinking the next one cannot possibly be better than the one before, but it's like they kind of blow you away with all the experiences they have. And it almost makes me wish my kids were still little and I was volunteering at Evergreen. Not quite, but almost. Um, and I wanted to say welcome to uh, Mr. Wayne Sackett. I think he'll be a great addition to the high school and it's really, really nice to see him out there. Um, I've not often seen him outside of like his, you know, coaching stuff. And <laughs> But welcome Wayne, really nice to have you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mrs. Mayor. Um, just condolences to Jerry Moga's family and talk to Ryan for a little bit um, and, and reading about her. Although she was with us for a very short time, just sounds like a remarkable young woman. So I'm grateful for the few months that she was here and all the kids that she influenced while she was here, but sad news for her family. Um, services are on Thursday around 10 or 11 for whoever can make it. Um, secondly, uh, Family Policy Board, La Crosse County, um, is making a big push for all the school districts to attend um, the La Crosse School District's um, Rebuilding for Learning. It's their, fourth, it's their fourth convention coming up on August 12th. And I'm assuming most of our, most of our admin knows about this, um, special ed department, whatever. But this year is focusing on trauma-based injuries to children and how that affects adults and how it is, it is the new frontier of, of research that's being done. And there are people from all over the country coming in to speak. It's a really, it's free. It's an amazing opportunity. And so I've got a bunch of flyers, which I'll leave at the back, that people can pick up um, with information about how to register. And I would strongly urge all any parent that's listening or staff or whatever and admin, hopefully, to spread it out to our district because it, it's going to happen. La Crosse County is pushing it. And Wisconsin has become the number one state to grab this research and go with it. People are watching us, and all kinds of grants are happening. Cool. Amazing programs are happening, and this one particular day is a really good kickoff that I'd love to see as many people in our district as possible attend. So I will make that available. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Menninger. 
Uh, just a few quick things this evening. First, it's always a, a great night when we have the Friends of Education Award and certainly echo those comments, but uh, great to, to see just the amount of time and effort that our volunteers put in. Um, so thanks to all of them. Um, also welcome, congratulations to Mr. Sackett. It's now official, we voted on it, so <laughs> I usually say congratulations. Um, and then last, for those of you who are regular watchers, you know that uh, several months ago I started my countdown. Tonight in our packets, we have the fall athletic schedules. And before our next meeting, uh, many of the fall sports will already be practicing and underway. So it is now upon us. So that will officially end my countdown <laughs> until next year. So. Okay, thank you very much. I just have a couple comments. Our personnel and governance committee is meeting in August. We will be starting up again in August and um, have a few items. Uh, to look at and uh, I think the policies will probably be coming out next couple board meetings so that we know which ones the committees need to work on and as we approach the new school year friends of education that always is such a heartwarming um, time of year to be able to recognize those folks and I, if you can just imagine behind the people that we recognize probably are hundreds we know that two to three thousand people volunteer each and every year at our school district and so it, it is what makes Holman unique, I think, the amount of commitment we have from our community and from our business leaders and, and financial gifts um, and their time, treasure, and talent is so important to us. Um, as I drive around, sometimes in the district, I drive by school buildings and sometimes I stop in and walk through and sometimes principals see me, building administrators see me, sometimes they don't. It's just, it's kind of a fun time of the year and I will tell you, I always talk about that wives tale of our teachers only teach and our, our school staff only work nine months out of the year because I'm seeing more and more cars at the buildings. Teachers are getting ready in some cases, uh, summer school's going on. Um, teachers are getting ready for their cla their classrooms ready for next year if they don't have a class taking place right now. We know that we have staff taking classes in college, taking summer credits. We know that our administrators, you know, it's not a nine to five, a, a seven to three kind of thing. I see them there late at night. I see the lights on when it gets dark and we know it doesn't get dark until eight or nine. Um, so we see all of those things and I just wanna say thank you for all that you do for our district, not only the people in the audience, but the staff that um, help prepare our buildings for the new year and, and make sure that our buses are safe over the summer so that we can transport students safely in the fall. So thank you for all that you do year around. We know that it's a year round kind of, of thing and it is much appreciated. And I, like I said, I like to put that wives tale to bed sometimes just for the sake of doing it, so. Um, then moving on to our board meeting schedule, um, we have a meeting on August 11th and the 25th. September 8th, we have a regular board meeting, and then September 22nd is our annual meeting, our board meeting, our budget hearing. It's like the, the nighttime, here we are for the whole evening, I think from 6 until probably 9 o'clock, we have a few meetings that take place. Are there any board meeting reflections at this time? Then I would um, ask Mrs. Mayor to read the motion for executive session. Happily. Be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin Statute 19.851C for considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. In this case, for the purpose of considering, reviewing employee compensation, and for reviewing the district administrator's performance evaluation. Is there a second? A second. And would you do the roll call, please? Yes, I will. Tim Menninger? No. Lisa Collins? Yes. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Tom Cruise? Yes. Cheryl Hancock? Yes. Anita Zagazinski? Yes. Kate Mary? Yes. Okay, we have six of the seven board members um, voted affirmative, so we will meet in closed session and we will take about a five minute break.